in the north, west and south of Yorkshire, our water supply comes from reservoirs. But what about in the east? Let's talk about it. Hi everyone, welcome to the Science Behind with me, Guy, back again for another video. And I've got my colleague Charlotte with me. It's great to be here, Guy. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's great to have you on, Charlotte. Charlotte, please tell our viewers what you do for Yorkshire Water. I am part of the Capital Communications team, talking about all the investment we're doing here at Yorkshire Water. Excellent. And what are we doing today on the Science Behind? We're going to be talking about boreholes and groundwater. Excellent. Let's go and learn about some boreholes and some groundwater. I'm here today at the groundwater pumping station at Great Heck, and I'm here to meet Paul. Paul, welcome back to the Science Behind. Remind viewers what you do for Yorkshire Water. Hi Charlotte, uh, I work in the water resources team as a hydrogeologist. So Paul, what are we going to look at today? Well today I'm going to tell you all about boreholes and groundwater. Should we go and have a look at one? Yeah, let's go. So Paul, what are boreholes? Well boreholes are essentially a, a a vertical shaft um, from the ground surface into the earth and they can be for various different um, purposes but for us in the water industry uh, our boreholes are for us to access our groundwater resources so uh, we drill down into aquifers to access the groundwater and this is an idea that goes back um, millennia uh, so the Romans produced wells uh, and that's essentially what we have now. It's, a, it's a, a modern equivalent of the old well. Okay, Charlotte, well, this is what our boreholes generally look like. And there are various differences between this and uh, the, what we had before. Um, probably the most important one is that uh, our boreholes are, are much deeper. In the old days, uh, the wells were hand dug. And so you couldn't go much below the water table because you couldn't physically dig underwater. Uh, whereas now we drill them um, using big drilling rigs from the surface so we can go as deep into the ground as we need to. Uh, another big difference is that uh, the old wells would have been lined with bricks typically um, and that would just be to stop them from, from collapsing. Whereas we use uh, a steel liner and you can see the top of the steel liner coming out that's the sort of bluey bit there. Another uh, major difference uh, would be that in the olden days uh, wells would have been lined with something like bricks and that was just to stop it from, from collapsing. Um, these days what we do is we use a, a steel liner and the, the purpose of the, of the liner is to seal the top of the borehole um, to stop uh, contaminated water that's close to the surface getting into the borehole. What we're doing is we're, we're targeting the water from much deeper into the aquifer because that's where the water is clean and uh, doesn't have as much contamination in it. So how do we actually get the water out of the borehole? Well, uh, things have moved on a little bit from uh, the olden days where we used to have a, a bucket on the end of a rope and we used to wind it up on a windlass at the top. These days uh, we use electrical pumps and they hang off uh, the, the rising main which can be quite deep into the borehole, so in some cases down 60-70 metres or more. And the, the pump pushes the water up the rising main and out through the pipework at the top. So how do boreholes differ from surface water sources? Well, the uh, surface environment is, uh, it contains quite a lot of pollution. Um, whether it's uh, natural pollutants such as bacteria in the soil or stuff that comes out of the back of animals, or uh, man-made pollutants from either domestic or industrial settings. And so surface water tends to be in contact with all of that pollution. So uh, when we abstract surface water, it needs a lot of treatment. Um, when we're dealing with groundwater, um, we're taking water from deep under the ground and so most of that pollution is absent. Um, we do get some influence from, from surface uh, pollutants but generally it's, a, it's just uh, a smaller problem. And for that reason groundwater is considered much cleaner and so requires much less treatment. So what's the technical difference between abstraction and extraction? Okay well in this context uh, we would describe taking the water from our boreholes as abstraction. Um, extraction we would use if we were uh, mining something or uh, extracting minerals, that sort of thing. That, that, that in this context, that that would be appropriate there. When we're talking about water, whether it's surface water or groundwater, we we talk about abstraction. Why are boreholes useful in areas like East Yorkshire, which have complex geology? Well, 
uh, the, the geology is pretty complex wherever you go, um, but it's true that we, we use groundwater more in the east. And that's really for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, in the east, we've got some very productive aquifers, um, like the chalk and the Sherwood sandstone. We're on the Sherwood sandstone today. But also, um, in the west, they've got a lot of reservoirs and they're a legacy from the Industrial Revolution where all these big towns and cities were growing up and they needed a big water supply. And so lots of reservoirs were built. And really the, the, the reliance on reservoirs in the west is a legacy from that time. And so in the east, we've always relied on groundwater and that's still the case today. So tell me a little bit about the groundwater team and what you do. Well, we're the in-house specialists in Yorkshire Water in uh, geology and groundwater. And our main function is really to, to kind of look after our groundwater resources. And that can be everything from uh, working out in the catchments and monitoring and uh, looking, looking after the catchments, um, working with third party uh, land users, uh, monitoring activity going through the planning system. And it's really to, to try and understand and influence uh, activity in the catchments which could affect the water quality in our in our boreholes. Well thanks Paul for telling me all about boreholes. I'm now looking to find out a little bit more about why groundwater abstraction matters more than ever. Do you know anyone that I should speak to? You're welcome uh, and I'd recommend you speak to Bethan, my colleague in the groundwater team who features on the previous uh, Science Behind episode on water resources. So Bethan, welcome back to the Science Behind. Thanks, it's great to be back. So why does groundwater matter now more than ever? Well, groundwater's always been important and known about. If we look back to the past, a lot of our towns and villages have got old wells and springs in them. Um, but it's becoming more important to us and uh, more focus is being put onto groundwater because of the increasing pressure our water resources are coming under. And that's from things like increasing demand from data centres, which need lots of water to keep them cool, uh, from changing weather and climate. Groundwater's a lot more resilient to drought than some of our other water resources. It's also been driven by population growth in our area as well, which is increasing pressure. Um, groundwater is actually the largest store of fresh water available to us, so it's a really important one for us to consider how we can best make use of it. Um, and boreholes typically are um, long life assets, so uh, they last obviously a long time, uh, don't need too much maintenance and upkeep. But at Yorkshire Water, we've got a few of our assets that are approaching the end of that asset life. So we're seeing investment now in new assets and replenishing our existing ones to make sure that they're all in good working order uh, to ensure that we can keep abstracting groundwater. So what are the different ways that we treat groundwater? So the type of treatment needed for each groundwater site will vary um, according to different characteristics of the site. So it's linked to geology, it's linked to the catchment of that particular area. But behind us we've got a UV reactor and that makes sure we've got no harmful bacteria in our water. So what's our strategy for using groundwater? Well groundwater makes up about 20% of our water resources here at Yorkshire Water uh, and where we abstract groundwater is primarily related to the local geology and hydrogeology um, so it's very dependent on the rocks and the rock type that we have there and we use groundwater as a constant source of water into our network um, all through the year. Uh, it's a very resilient source of water for things like drought so it's good uh, reliability in times of dry or hot weather. Uh, we also abstract groundwater in line with our abstraction licences, which are agreed with the Environment Agency. Well, Bethan, thanks for talking to me about our groundwater resources. No worries. It's been really good to chat. Where are you heading next? We're going to East Ness to look at some of our new borehole assets. I'm here at East Ness on a very wet and windy day visiting the borehole project we've got going on here, and I'm with James. James, what do you do for Yorkshire Water? So I'm James and I'm a project manager within Capital Delivery and I work on clean water projects. Can you tell me about some of the borehole schemes we've got going on? So Yorkshire Water is investing over £20 million in borehole projects. Um, obviously we're here at East Ness today which is one of them and um, we have some other projects such as at Malton and Heck Water Treatment Works. And can you tell me a little bit about the project here at East Ness? So we're currently on site drilling two test boreholes just behind us now um, and this will enable us to test the yield and the quality of the water that we're hoping to abstract from the aquifer. Um, but along with that, in line with our water resource management plans, we're going to be building a service reservoir on site 
uh, which will increase the storage capacity for us. And then we can then distribute this water for a new pipeline uh, using a pumping station to get that water out to our customers in the network. So can you tell me a little bit about the other borehole projects we've got going on at the moment? Yes, yeah, so there's several other projects going on, such as at Malton Water Treatment Works, where they, it's, it's early in the life cycle there, but we're hoping to drill a new borehole and build a service reservoir and pumping station. But then there's another project at Heck Water Treatment Works, where we're hoping to reline two existing boreholes that will be brought back into service. What impact do these schemes have on the community? So borehole jobs give great resilience against climate change and it's a really sustainable water resource which helps Yorkshire Water meet the demands of both population and economic growth in the area. And what regulators do we work with to make these projects happen? Yorkshire Water works with lots of regulators such as the Drinking Water Inspectorate and particularly on um, borehole projects the Environment Agency who set very strict limits on what we can abstract from certain water sources. Thanks James for showing me around the East Nest borehole project. No problem, it was my pleasure Charlotte. So that was the science behind boreholes. Charlotte, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Guy. What was your favourite bit of the video? So I think it's amazing how boreholes are a sustainable water resource. And by having projects like the one here at East Ness, we're thinking about the future of Yorkshire and how we'll be able to supply customers for years to come. Perfect. Please don't forget to like the video. Subscribe. And leave a comment below. And I'll see you on the next one. Until then, bye. Bye.